What's going on, everyone? This is Alex USA Days, and today we're going to talk about an interesting topic. What do you do when you are the first QA engineer in the company? So let's say there is no testing in place, uh, or there's no documentation. What do you do? How do you start testing? I've been in this position before, and I have my own approach. We're going to talk about it. But first, I wanted to check with ChatGPT since uh, ChatGPT have been giving us really sound advice so far. So I just wanted to uh, get the response from ChatGPT first, and then we're going to go to what I've did before uh, that helped me to get going. Okay, so here is the question on the screen. How to start testing if you are the first QA in the company and there's no documentation? And the chat GPT says, uh, so starting without documentation can be daunting task, but there are a few steps you can take to get started. First, uh, familiarize yourself with the product. Before you can start testing, you need to understand what the product does, how it works, and what its intended purpose is. Spend some time exploring the product and try to understand its features and functionalities. Uh, well, yeah, that's definitely the first thing you should do is try to understand how product works, right? Uh, also, maybe you want to talk with someone who knows how the product works or even ask for like a little demo uh, from the project manager. Second, um, identify stakeholders. Identify the people who are responsible for the product, such as developers, project managers, and product owners. Get to know them and understand their expectations for the product. Yeah, essentially what I've said, uh, you want to talk to people that know how the product should work to get a better idea what you will be testing. Uh, step three, create a test plan. Start by creating a basic test plan that outlines the key areas of the product you want to test. This can include functional testing, performance testing, security testing, and usability testing. I would not go into creating test plan right away. Um, there, there could be, if you're joining a startup and they have no working product yet, then you might have more time uh, to spend to create test plan. But if you're working in a startup that you just joined and they already have a working product, uh, test plan might not be your top priority. You might to think about uh, actual regression test cases for whatever is in place right now. So like a test matrix. Define test cases. Uh, step four, define specific test case for each area of the product you want to test. This should be detailed step-by-step -step instructions that explain how to test each feature or functionality. Okay, so this also could not could be not a priority uh if you're again if you're in a startup that doesn't have a product yet they did not have their mvp yet then maybe you can start you know creating more documentation in terms of test cases uh if the product is already going and you just joined and you're the first qa uh, you might want to focus your effort on the critical pass uh, first. So whatever this, the user is doing the most, whatever is the uh, user interacting with and how they interact with, you might want to identify this and base and make your tests. I don't even want to say test cases, but your test scenarios first. So more like end-to-end -end flow for a specific feature. Step five, start testing. Once you have test plan and test cases defined, start testing the product. Record your finding and document any issues you encounter. Use the feedback to improve the product to create better test cases. Okay, again, this seems like, uh, you know, if you have a lot of time available to you, but if you're joining already working product and, you know, they want you to start testing, you might not have that much time to, to create all that. Uh, step six, build a knowledge base. You as the product start building a knowledge base of what you learn. This can include documentation, best practices, and tips for testing product effectively. Uh, step six is good. I would say just create a QA space and start defining some templates. Put them in like how to open a bug, what kind of fields you will have in the bug. Uh, just some general templates for QA that you can start adding over time. Um, step seven, collaborate with the team, work closely with development team to share your findings and collaborate on solutions. Build a relationship with key stakeholders and communicate regularly to ensure everyone is on the same page. Mm. 
So step seven and step two kind of similar, but in general, so you can't really avoid <laughs> having communication if you're joining a startup and you know you work closely with the team, especially if you like in the Scrum or Agile environment. Uh, the communication will be ongoing. You definitely want to talk to people first to understand who's who and who does what. Uh, you want to ask questions, uh, right people ask right people right questions, right? But uh, seems like two and seven will come naturally with you being on board in the company. Okay, so remember testing is an iterative process. Uh, you will need to continually refine your testing strategy as you learn more about the product, be patient, stay focused, and you'll soon become an expert in uh, testing the product. Okay, I can say it's a decent advice, but uh, my understanding of this, that is more of like a general instruction and not immediately going into, okay, how can I test this? It doesn't answer the question, how, how can I test this? Uh, right away it's more of a you know overall general approach so what i normally do and i typed it out over here in the notepad so here would be the flow that i would follow right so what you want to do is once you get familiar with the product uh you want to break it in modules right uh, you want to say, okay, this is going to be login module. Let's say this is profile page module. Uh, this is uh, some, you know, uh, management section module, whatever the application might be. So make sure you break it up into modules, right? So each module will have some functionality in it. How do you define one module from another? Well, uh, it depends on the app or the product, but uh, you can th think. Uh, about module as kind of includes the area of functionality, right? Like a section where everything seems to be touching. Uh, one functionality is related to another and it's really hard to, you know, break them apart, right? So for example, if you're testing e-commerce page, so uh, your homepage could be one module, right? Or even uh, go and break them like this is a search. Uh, module where I can go through different search uh, sections that, that would be different uh, module on the items categories there could be a, a module on the page about us page right so start breaking app in modules uh, or like uh, pages then what you want to do you want to create checklist with the end-to-end -end user flow in each module so let's say if we're talking about uh, login page, right? User login. Uh, on the login page, we go to this page and user have to be able to successful login with the right credentials, right? Um, or if you create an account, let's create account module, right? So overall, it's just a checklist of things that can happen, like so, sort of like end-to-end -end flow. Uh, user create account, user logged in, uh, user went on the profile page and like updated profile information. User was able to add payment method. User was able to search for an item added to the cart. User was able to check out uh, like a successful confirmation email was received. So you can kind of create a very high level uh, functionalities, end-to-end -end flows related to that specific module, okay? So once you've created this checklist and think about it really as a shopping list, right? You know, buy milk, do this, do this. So very, very high level. Once you have this in place, uh, you want to go with that to your product manager uh, or whoever is responsible for running the product, creating stories, um, adding them, maybe it's gonna be business analyst. I'm not sure who, who is in your place, right? But there there has to be a person that is responsible for overall uh, completion of the product, uh, getting communication and what are the next features in the pipeline and so on. So sit with that person and go through your checklist uh, showing the flows, the end-to-end -end flows that you created, the checklist. So I do this first, I do this first. You can go through the application together and. Uh, kind of cross-reference with what you've created, the document. After that, when you'll get a feedback, live feedback on the flow, you will definitely going to add some things that are missing, uh, some things that are more important, right? So once you have this feedback, you can start expanding uh, each checklist item into test cases 
or maybe um, user scenarios that are more specific to functionality. Once you have that in place, now you can start creating test matrix uh, with like top priority test cases that you can run as part of your testing regression or like, uh, you know, release preparation. So make sure everything in this matrix working. And then you can start adding more stuff and prioritize it uh, based on what is needed. So uh, here's an example, right? So let's say we have some sort of application has multiple modules. So uh, checklist, login page, right? Or uh, user is able to log in, right? Uh, second module, create user is uh, able to uh, create an account. So there's a module where user is able to create an account. Then profile page. So user is able to go on the profile page. Now there you can start creating scenarios. So user can update profile info, uh, like overall high level scenario. And then you, inside that scenario, you can start adding test cases, uh, update photo, update ad address, uh, whatever the, the flow would be for your specific application. So this way, you're kind of starting to dissecting your app, the product. Uh, you can start uh, clearly see the user flow and what is the top priority. And you can start building your uh, test matrix like that. Okay, so hopefully that helps. This is kind of a very hands-on approach that I have if I start in a company fresh as a first queue engineer and uh, there is no testing in place, no documentation. Like You need to understand how to test and if you need to get involved and engaged uh, pretty fast with the testing process, I think you can use this approach. So hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching. This was Alex USA Days. Hit like and subscribe. I have some uh, links in the description. Um, check them out too. And bye-bye.